Hey everybody, my name is Dr. Daniel Choi here at North Texas Dental Surgery, Wisdom Teeth, and Denture Implant Center. I am a board certified periodontist since 2011, and over this few many years, I've seen many patients who were interested in dental implants or had dental implants. And many patients have many similar questions. And so what I've done is I've compiled a series of videos that basically go over a lot of the questions that patients have asked me in the past and trying to comprehensively answer a lot of these questions about you know prospectively getting dental implants or maybe they've had dental implants and they're having some issues and maybe they want to understand why so again over the last few months i've been compiling this series of videos that i've been you know really wanting to get out to the public so patients can really understand anything and everything about dental implants I'm super excited about this. I really believe that patients, if they truly understand the concepts in the video, that they will be able to be their um, own best advocate in the sense of knowing the best solutions for their mouth and also um, being able to save yourself some money. So that was the whole objective of these videos. So I really hope that you guys really can watch these videos and um, you know really educate yourselves and be able to get those you know, beautiful results that you've always wanted, whether it's that, you know, that confidence, that beautiful smile that you've always wanted, or to just be able to chew again, or to just stop wasting money with um, previous dentistry that they've had and avoiding all that frustration. So uh, please, again, feel free to watch these videos. And if you like them, please give me a thumbs up. Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook at North Texas Dental Surgery. We are more than happy to see you guys also as patients if you feel that you wanna come in and ask us any questions. All right, thanks and good luck to you in the future. All right, so let's get started here. All right, so the big question is how do you save money and avoid having a result like this? Okay, so why watch this video? So I'm not trying to create clickbait to, to get people to watch this video. Um, if you are informed, you will be able to ask the right questions to make sure you get the right treatment and also possibly save money. I've seen many common themes in the past. Anybody would obviously try to save money, um, but I've seen some patients go the cheap route and get botched. Had a patient um, that had a few implants done with me a few years ago, recently tried to save some money, um, needed some more implants, and she went to Mexico, and one of her, actually two of her implants failed immediately. So um, this literally happened last week. Um, but as a result, sometimes they have horrible aesthetic results, can't chew properly, have implants fail later on, maybe have damage to nerves, etc. In the end, they spend a lot of money um, to get it fixed. Um, dental implant treatment doesn't have to be expensive. The goal of my videos are to teach you insider information so that you can come as reasonably close to um, as possible to diagnosing like a board certified periodontist. So what credibility do I have? I'm a board certified periodontist since 2011, placed over 10,000 implants in my career. I place dental implants for many different applications for single teeth, implant bridges, denture implants, all on four, which are the teeth in a day. Also, I do normal bone grafting for socket preservations after an extraction, uh, more significant bone grafting from trauma or you know having a big infection. Uh, we treat those with guided bone regeneration, which is also called ridge augmentation, um, do sinus lifting, etc. Um, also, I perform gum surgeries for gum grafting and gum disease because your gum health does have a huge impact on your dental implant health over the long haul. Um, you may have a short attention span like mine. Uh, many people who know me say I'm ADD, um, but I promise this information is relevant. Again, I spent a lot of time trying to you know, create something that was easily digestible um, by patients um, because I really, it's, I really wanted to help answer these questions that I've seen from patients over my 12 years of practice. Um, at some point, you will need to know some of this uh, basic fundamentals to help you understand that what we're talking about later on. And again, this will help you save money, time, pain, and grief in the future. All right, so some basic information. Many patients often confuse dental implants as being the whole tooth or the whole set of teeth. Um, this is incorrect. Dental implants are you know, technically just a titanium screws that integrate with the bone. So in this little animation, you see this um, implant, the screw that's buried in the bone, that is the actual dental implant. And on top of that, you have the abutment and crown. So a real world x-ray, this is not my case, but this is, I just downloaded from the internet, but this is an implant and this is the abutment and this is the crown. Again, so the implant's buried in the bone. So dental implants, when we're thinking of them, we have to think of the dental implant like any other post that we would use as support. So think of a mailbox post, which is used to obviously support the mailbox, which is what we really care about. And you have these little posts in the ground for the fence that help support the actual wood. So 
Um, you cannot see the dental implant because it is embedded in the bone. So again, in this animation, it's embedded in the bone. So the implant's role is to integrate with the bone and it forms a rigid bond with the bone as if it's like a steel post that's embedded in concrete. The crown is the actual portion that looks like the tooth. So that's a crown right here and that's all you should see. And the piece that connects the implant, this in the bone, to the crown that's above the gums is called the abutment, okay? So this is what actually connects, again, the implant to the crown. So this is the interface piece that goes through the gums. So again, in this animation, this is the implant, this is the abutment, you can't see the gums, but the gums are around here. And then this is the crown, the only visible part of the tooth that you actually see. Um, so your like bone, your your bone volume and bone quality are two very important concepts when talking about dental implants because your bone is what supports the actual dental implant. That's what the bone uh, the bone is what the implant is actually embedded in. So two main concepts: bone volume, bone quality. Your bone volume, how long and how wide your bone is, and the bone quality, um, how hard or how soft your bone is, are the two most important factors when considering dental implants. So just think of drilling a screw into a wall to support a heavy painting or a TV. We want to drill into the stud and not the drywall because it's harder, right? So that's because we are concerned about the quality, how hard it is. We also want to drill into the stud with as long and as wide of a screw as possible, right? So again, going to our normal applications, hanging, I even have a whiteboard right here, right? Ideally, I want to get into a stud. Why? Because again, it's, it's harder. I have more security. I'm, sure that my implant isn't going to fail when I put some force on there, right? Bone quality is the quality of the hardness of your bone. And that's a very important, right? Some people genetically have hard bone, some have genetically soft bone. In the mailbox example, would it best be best to not just bury the mailbox post in concrete rather than just soil? Obviously, right? But bone quality can also be affected by disease, medications, etc. Lower jaw bone, which is what we call the mandibular bone, the mandible, is more dense than your upper jaw bone, which is what we call the maxilla. Why does this matter? It's the same as if you wanted to mount something in the wall. Ideally, you want to be in a stud versus drywall. Because your upper jaw bone is softer, you typically want to place a larger, which means like a long and wide implant as possible to compensate for the softer bone. Ideally, it is better to be bearing a mailbox post in concrete versus soil. So bone volume, again, the bone volume is how uh, wide or how long or, you know, the depth, thickness, all that stuff. The bone volume of your bone matters. If we want to place as long and wide of an implant as possible, for example, because if your bone is soft, we need to have as much bone possible to surround the implant. Your jaws can produce a ton of force. You need your implants to have as much surface area in contact with the surrounding bone. We call that the bone implant contact, right? So that makes sense, right? The more surface area and contact, the more security it's gonna have. We can accomplish more bone implant contact by having a wider implant and a longer implant, and or. Ideally, it's gonna be best to have a combination of both. If I, this is a weird example, but if I stick my toe in the wet concrete and it sets, is it easier to pull out after than had I stuck my whole foot in the wet concrete and it sets? And again, this has to do with the surface area and contact. So the amount of bone people have is based off of two things, genetics and if you have been missing the tooth. There's nothing we can really do about genetics, right? Some people genetically have a lot of height and thickness of bone for us to place a long and wide implant in. Some people genetically have very short bone or very thin bone or a combination of short and thin bone. These people would then have a non-ideal implant size because we would have to place a skinny or a short implant in the bone and or both, right? But the good news is that we can add more bone, especially in thickness, to help these people get dental implants. And we'll discuss that in the bone grafting video later on. Also, some people genetically have nerves and sinuses in different positions that affect how long of an implant we can place. Again, we will discuss that in the following video. Bone volume can be lost. So what, is, what are we talking about? Well, bone is living tissue. If you don't stress the bone, your bone can diminish in size and density. This is similar to what happens to muscles. If you don't work out, your muscles atrophy. Same, I tell patients like if you were to be in a coma and for like three years, um, you know, you don't just jump out of bed and start dancing because you woke up, you have so much atrophy. And so, because you're, you're not using your muscles and the same thing actually happens to bone. If you don't have a tooth, you don't transfer stress from the tooth to the root to the bone. But the good news is we can increase the width and height of bone through a procedure called bone grafting. 
I will discuss some bone grafting options on a, f a future video. You'll want to know this because bone grafting comes in different options and therefore different costs, costs and invasiveness. So hopefully that was really understandable. Um, may sound like a very sim uh, simple concept, but it's going to be very important that you understand that because it's going to lead into understanding why you know we pick the implant sizes that we do and also future complications, etc. Um, we discussed in this video, just as a little summary, that we want to use as long and wide of an implant as possible, but it's not as simple as that. We will discuss the guiding principles of how we determine the proper sizing of your implants. And just a little teaser here, here's an example of a plant, implant that a surgeon uh, placed that was too wide for that space. Um, this is a patient that um, a former co-resident of mine from 12 years ago um, had seen um, out in her state. So. Um, how do we avoid something like this? So stay tuned for our next video. Thanks.